Hi, welcome. This is going to be an introductory demo for the Personal Finance Lab stock market game. So, um, this is Personal Finance Lab. Um, our The heart of what we do is our stock market game, um, investing simulation. Um, we also have a huge curriculum library and a budgeting game. Um, I'm going to quickly walk through what it looks like for an administrator, um, just so you can see some of the settings you would have for your contest, and then I'll show what it actually looks like if you're using the investing competition, what it would look like for a user while they're managing the portfolio. So I will log in with my teacher account, um, which takes me to my dashboard here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a challenge so you can see some of the settings that we have available. So I, I was talking with Vince very briefly a couple weeks ago about the structure of what this would be. And so once you have a challenge set up, um, you would get a link that you can share with your participants to join. Um, if you're charging for access, then you would have your um, shopping cart or payment page, and then you can give the users the link once they've confirmed their registration and everything. Um, we can talk a little bit more about the details of that process um, once we get there. Uh, another point is that throughout the entire platform that we have, we have live support, both for the administrators and all the participants. So if anybody has any questions about getting anything going, we have a live chat during market hours. Uh, otherwise, we have a contact us support ticket system, and we get back to everybody in, within a day. So to get started, I'm going to give my challenge a name and a description. So these two appear on the registration page just to make sure that your users are in the right place. Since we're only doing one challenge, that's not really going to be a big deal. Um, estimated participants, I think you guys don't really know, and it doesn't really matter. We just use this when we aggregate it across everybody who's using it when we plan our server load. So if you're off by 10, 100, or 1,000, it doesn't make a difference. Just we try to get averages when we uh, do our planning moving forward. Um, you can also put a password on it. So if you want to put a further barrier to make sure that nobody gets in by mistake without paying their entry fee, then you can put a password that you would also send people when they register. And I see Crystal just joined us. Um, next up, we have our registration window. This is where when your users can create their account Hi. for the first time. Hi, Crystal. Can you see us? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. I'm so sorry, though. I couldn't get in for some reason. It's all right. So I, I'm just, my name is Kevin Smith, and I'm just going through the settings that an administrator has when they're setting up a uh, competition on personal finance list. Okay. So, um, this next one here is the registration window. This is when your users can come in and create their accounts. Um, depending on how you want to structure your competition, it's very common to have the registration window close before trading starts. But um, there's also some advantages of leaving it open. That way you could have late registrations who are coming in last minute who might want to come in. I don't think you really want to cut off any potential donors. So. In this kind of situation, you probably just leave the registration window open for the entire competition, maybe except for the last week or something. Time zone, I assume we're going to keep it Eastern time, but there's others available. Um, and there's also a forum built into the site. Uh, the forum would let the participants post messages to each other and read them. Um, I don't know if it's something that would actually be applicable to what you're doing here. Um, a lot of the time it's used in a classroom setting where a teacher would post a prompt and the students would be asked to reply to it. Um, in this case, I'm not sure um, if it's something you'd be interested in using or not. Kevin, we probably would want it because um, we wouldn't mind encouraging some interaction and some some com competitive, hey, I'm doing you know better than Vince or whatever. Sure. Um, but is there any kind of monitoring? Because also, of course, we have to you know be aware of what people are posting. So. So we don't actively monitor it on our end, but whoever you have set as the administrator can delete messages or do whatever they want with it, or just turn it off entirely if they've decided the participants can't be trusted with that responsibility. <laughs> um, which is very rare even when we're talking about 13-year-old kids. I've only had a, a couple instances I've had come up in the last couple of years. Um, but you know, I think the crop that you're working with is probably going to be just fine. Uh, next up is all of the settings we have for the stock game itself. It's extremely configurable. Um, you know, the currency portfolio, we're probably going to stick with US dollars. The trading window, 
The users can log into the site before trading starts. They can look around, they can see the tutorial videos, they can look at our um, <coughs> curriculum and stuff, but they can't place any trades. Once the trading start date comes, they can. And at the trading end date, we freeze their portfolios in time. So they don't need to close out their positions, they don't need to do anything. Uh, if they log in three days later, it's just going to look like exactly as it did at 4 o'clock p.m. when the markets closed on the last trading day. So it just makes it a little bit easier and we do snapshots and everything so that they can see their final positions. Um, starting cash, how much money you want to give them. With a major competition, the best practice is either a million or a hundred thousand, uh, depending on how you want them to be looking at it. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we're looking at percentages, but it just kind of makes people feel better if they have a million dollars to play with. Um, interest earned on cash. So if somebody is not trading, they're just holding cash in their portfolio, we can give them interest on that. So this is often used in an investing class to have the risk-free rate that they're comparing their returns against. But whenever we do competitions, we usually actually set this to some negative number, like a negative 2 or 3%. So the, anybody who's not actively trading is going to be trailing down in the class rankings. They're, they're penalized for not getting involved. So, but best practice is usually zero if you don't really, if it's your first time working with this. Um, margin, can the participants borrow money? If they are allowed to borrow money, how much interest are they charged on that loan? Um, day trading and short selling, you know, pretty standard rules. Generally speaking, in allowing day trading and short selling improves um, participation because the users have an incentive to be looking at their portfolio and it increases the universe of stocks they might be interested in um, investing in. Um, but it's up to you and how you want to structure it. And of course there's minimum prices so you can disallow penny stock trading. We highly recommend at least a $3 minimum price for both buying and shorting. Um, last settings here, public portfolios would let everybody in the competition see each other's trades. So in a competitive setting we usually have this turned off. Um, what's very common though is in a classroom setting the teacher will turn on public portfolios for the first week or so. That way the student can see what each other are doing and then turn them off. So after the first week or so then it's kind of a blind game. Um, so nobody's just copying whoever's in first place. Uh, do you want the admin account in the rankings? Um, Sharpe ratio and alpha and beta. We do calculate both of these which are risk adjusted returns. Um, at a, at a university level, when we're talking about higher level finance students, it's very common for the professor to say that a the sharp ratio rankings matter, the regular returns don't. But for this kind of fundraiser fun event, you might want to turn it on just so it's there, but you don't really need to focus too much on it. Um, and then what can they actually do? So we have a ton of different rules on how the users can actually interact with the platform. Maximum number of trades that they can place throughout the entire competition. You can also say you can only place a certain number of trades per day. So uh, both of these are options available. Trading notes. Um, I'll show you what this actually looks like, but every time a user goes to place a trade in their portfolio, we ask them to provide some rationale. Um, by turning trade notes on, they have to write something in order for the system to take their trade or uh, execute their order. If they're not, it's just optional. So for a fundraiser, this would be optional. If you're working with actual kids, you'd want to make it required. Um, what can they trade? So we have equities, so stocks and ETFs, um, options, mutual funds, bonds, futures, future options, and spots. And we have over 30 different international markets to choose from when you're actually trading. Um, the restriction here is that if you're, if you're doing all these international markets, these use mostly delayed data, whereas for the United States we use real-time bid-ask prices. So if you are looking at using some of the other international exchanges, you probably just want to turn off day trading so somebody who has a real-time data feed doesn't have an advantage. Um, some of the other configurations you can do is you could set what kind of commissions are charged for each trade. A position limit says that a student can only put a certain amount of their portfolio in any one stock. So for example, if I put a 25% position limit on equities, I would need to buy at least four different stocks in order to use up all my cash. It won't let me put all my eggs in one basket. Uh, the diversification rule works similarly. So let's say I have equities, uh, mutual funds, and bonds, and I put a 50% diversification limit on equities. 
I can only use half my buying power to buy equities. The other half I have to use with mutual funds or bonds. Um, this is very common when we're talking about uh, high school classes in particular, where a student's not going to want to jump into bonds right away because they're not very, they don't have as high a return and they're trying to get, you know, they're just trying to ignore those other types. So it kind of forces them to allocate their portfolio differently. Again, with this kind of competition, we probably would have the diversification limit maxed out. Um, and then you probably will put a position limit to just encourage it's a little bit of um, extra investing. I'm sorry, uh, investing in some other securities. And I'll just stick with U.S. exchanges for now. Um, last bit, you can actually have custom exchanges as well. So this is used frequently when we're talking about a statewide competition. The um, organizers sometimes will ask to have a custom exchange that just features stocks that have a strong presence in that state. Um, and this is very also very commonly used in a class where they want to say the students can only trade stocks in the S&P 500 or with really young students saying you're just limited to Dow 30 or something. Uh, you can also do blacklists if there's some stocks you don't want to be trading. For this kind of fundraiser, I don't think that's going to be applicable, but the functionality is there. Um, we do also have a budgeting game. I don't think it's uh, relevant to what we're doing here, but at a high level, the budgeting game gives the participants um, the role of a college student, the part-time job. And they need to balance their uh, work, their study, their quality of life um, in order to successfully maintain their budget for 12 or more months. Um, so I'm not going to get into that too, too much detail, but it is something else that we have. And the last step is our curriculum. So we have over 300 lessons for personal finance, investing, um, economics, uh, business topics, and career prep. For this kind of competition where we're working with people who pretty much already know what a stock is, you're not really going to be using much of this, except you might want to turn on, you might want to ask them to watch some of the tutorial videos and things just so they understand how they manage their portfolio on Personal Finance Lab. Um, so I'll just turn those on for this. and create. So you can also, and now my competition is created, so that's all I need to do. You can also change these almost any one of these rules later if you want to. Um, there's not really a restriction on that. We have a whole edit, um, edit rules page. This link here is what you would give your participants. So if I log out of my account and I click it, It will take a minute to load, but what it's going to do is it loads that challenge I just set up with the description I specified. I choose my username and password. Um, we ask date of birth not because we store it, but because if there's a user who's under 13, we don't we don't save a lot of personal information. Um, email address, first name, last name. Um, they get a confirmation email. Um, they can also use that for password resets, but all this stuff is optional. They don't really need to enter it if they don't want to. So. That's the registration process. It's super straightforward. When it comes to actually interacting with the site once the contest is set up, you as the administrator can do everything a regular user can do. The only difference is that when you log in as the administrator, you have this, what we call the admin dashboard, um, which has a few little mini reports and things. And then at the top of the page, you as the administrator have this admin menu, which has all of your administrator tools. Um, when a regular user comes in, they come to this dashboard which we call the student dashboard. Right now my portfolio is empty. I haven't traded anything, so the system is just giving me some of the most popularly traded stocks. Um, there's a word of the day that rotates through. Um, they can even build a watch list of stocks they want to look at but not necessarily put in their portfolio. Um, in terms of research tools, when a, when a user is just getting started, the first place they would probably look is the tutorial videos up here, which just walk them through how to use the site. Um, we have tutorial videos for pretty much everything, but we only show the tutorial videos that are relevant to what you actually allowed. So for example, in this contest I set up, I didn't turn on options and future options. So I'm not going to show the future and options tutorial videos. It's just the stocks, mutual funds, and bonds that we can actually trade. Um, so they can they can see these whether or not you use the um, whether or not you use the assignments, they're always available. Research up here, we have 
a very robust uh, quotes and research tool. So the users don't really need to leave Personal Finance Lab at all to do all the, the main um, research that they need to do, to do for investing. So they get a quote for any company, they specify a detailed quote information with some charts that are pretty well configurable. News stories that mention this stock. Over on the side here, they get um, SEC filings, they get historical prices, uh, financial statements, so the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, annually or quarterly going back 20 years, um, detailed chart news, uh, company profile, you know, who is this company, what did they do. Um, there is market research that, that kind of talks about the market as a whole, and there's even more stuff depending on if you have, you know, the actual CFA people working on it, they're going to make more use of this than maybe some of the other um, people who are joining in that don't have the same investing experience. But this tool is used from high schools all the way through um, master level finance classes. It's, it's pretty robust. Um, other stuff available is in our learning center. So our learning center has our entire curriculum library. So even if you're not using the assignments, whoever's in the competition can see what's here. So this is all stuff to that, that um, talks about personal finance and business topics. Um, probably not super relevant to this competition, but it's still going to be visible. So at a high level, those are the support um, tools, but I'm going to actually go make a trade in my portfolio. So this is our trading pit. Um, to trade, the user would enter a symbol, but if they don't know the symbol, they can just uh, type the company name, and we give them the list of symbols that match. So let me zoom out a bit because it breaks the formatting. Um, so I typed in the symbol, it loads the, co the company name and logo, it gives me a quote um, with a bunch of detailed information. There's a few different ways to look at charts. Uh, everything here is color coded. It's green if this stock is up for the day, it's red if it's down. Um, I can see this chart is a simple one. I can do an advanced chart. With the advanced chart, I can even compare it against other stocks right in the quotes tool so I can compare how they're doing uh, relative to each other. If I scroll down a bit, um, I get all that quote information again just for this stock. Who are they? What do they do? Company news. Why is the stock moving? Um, analyst ratings. What's Wall Street saying about this stock? Price history going back to its IPO. Um, again, the financial statements and some of that more detailed quote information is all available right when they're trading. So I'm going to buy 10 shares off the bat. I get my estimated cost here. When I click preview, it updates that estimated cost to include the commissions. And if you're doing any international trading, the uh, real-time foreign exchange rate. And then I'm prompted to write a note. So why am I making this trade? Um, they can write basically as long as they want to. I think we allow uh, about a 500 character uh, paragraph. Click confirm, and it's executed immediately. Um, we use the real-time bid ask prices to process orders. So if I go back to my portfolio and I look at my open positions, it's already there. Um, these prices say delayed because we are not allowed to show the real-time prices. So it'll say delayed for the first 15 minutes. When I look at my holdings, um, I see the stocks, my return on them. I click this, it shows me a little bit more information, the dividend yield, PE rate, and all that kinds of stuff. Oops. Um, users can also look at their portfolio as charts. So this is a one-day chart. So this is red now because I'm actually losing money on this stock. Their uh, performance for the last 30 days, performance for the last year. Um, they can also export basically everything on the site. So their portfolio, their transaction histories, their um, his historical prices and stuff they found in the research tool, all of that they can export and use it outside of the platform. Um, other tools they have, they can they have a, a portfolio graphing tool. I can't show you that because I don't have historical data right now. But as they log in, they can see their portfolio over time. Their closed positions page. So if I sell McDonald's right here, I can go to my closed positions page, which will show me um, my McDonald's, the, the profit or loss I had on the actual trade. Um, it's going to take a little while for this to populate because the 15 minutes of my original order hasn't even come up yet. Um, the rankings page is the most engaging part of the site. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the rankings page in a few minutes when, I'm talking, when I mention the updates that we're about to launch later this week. 
uh, transaction history, you know, all the stocks they traded over time, they can export this. Um, they can see the trade note they made on each stock. Um, order history. So when users make a trade on our platform, we have market orders, limit orders, stop orders, trailing stop orders. So if they're using these other order types and their order hasn't executed yet, so let's say I'm using a limit order and you know, you know I'm just sick of waiting for it, they can see their outstanding orders in their order history, cancel them, edit them, do whatever they want to it. Um, we also do account for all splits and dividends um, on the X dividend and X split date. So um, those also will appear in their transaction history and their order history. Account balances is the most boring report we have, but it has a lot of useful information. How much were they charging commissions, how much total dividends they've received, all kinds of other stuff like that. Um, trade notes is their trade notes, and assignments is basically their assignments, um, if you chose to use them. Now, um, if in the update that we're about to launch, let me pull up our staging site so I can show you what's what I am working on for the next update um, this week. We're introducing what's called a badge system. So um, on the dashboard menu, the students will have a new, or the participants will have a new achievements page, which has a bunch of stuff that they can do throughout the site to earn badges. Um, so here's the ones I've earned so far. Here's the ones I can earn. So I can earn a new badge as soon as I place 25 trades. I click on it and see I, how close I'm coming to it. Um, the badges level up, so I got one when I had a, my first trade here, and then there's a second level. It's a gold one when I get a level two. There's, there can be up to four levels. Um, clicking a badge makes it active, which means that when I go back to my dashboard or anywhere else on the site, the badge appears on the uh, top of this panel here, so I can see which one I'm showing off. And then when I go to my rankings page, it has not only me and my the other participants. Which one do I actually have people in? So I can take a look here. Yeah, here we go. It shows their badge too, so it's a little bit more interesting than just a list of people and their uh, performance. Um, if I click on somebody else's badge, I see all the other stuff they've earned too. So we can do custom badges. So if there's something that you want to encourage and there's some kind of graphic you want to put up, we can do that. Um, it just depends on what you want to look at um, and how you want to encourage it. If you don't want to use badges at all, there is an option in the new class settings where you can just turn them off. So it just depends on how you want to do it, how, how you want to present the platform to the potential donors. So at a high level, that's most of it. Um, there are other reports and things that for the administrator, um, I'm not sure if how, mu how much detail you want to go into, but it's at a high level, you can see everything everyone's been doing, all the portfolios, all the trade notes, everything in between. Um, you can post messages yourself as the administrator. And if you do that, uh, this supports uh, pretty much all HTML. So you can put YouTube videos, you can put a Facebook feed, you can put whatever you want, and it appears on the right side of the page um, for all of your users at the top here. So, any questions or anything you'd like to see a little bit more detail about? Yeah, Kevin, on that last part, uh, when you posted that message, I saw you could upload like a picture too. Um, yes. If we wanted to say, hey, you know, to a sponsor or something, like we post in there and we put their logo and say, hey, thanks to XYZ sponsor, could we probably do that? Yes, you can. Um, trying to find one where I've actually done something like that. Yeah, here we go. So this is one where I actually put it a logo and said this is sponsored by um, Infinite Financial, which is a fake company that we use in our budget game. Um, and then when I log in as my as a student on the top of every page, they have that featured up here. So you can put, you can upload a logo, or you can have if you have a, um, the image hosted somewhere else, you can just enter it with um, raw HTML and it'll load exactly as you want it to be formatted. Um, and like I said, you could also put like YouTube videos and whatever else you wanted that your sponsor might want to show off in there. Okay. And then, um, you know, can you explain the, the cost again? 
just so that they can hear. So the cost is ten dollars per user. Um, if you're just using the stock game, um, the budget game is the same price, but you get a bulk discount if you use both. Um, but the pricing goes down depending on how many users you have. So up through about 150 users, it's just you know a straight ten dollars per student. Um, but after that point, you can get a site license for 250 students, which is just two thousand dollars. So you start seeing bulk discounts. Um, based on the way we discussed it before, you really don't know how many people you're going to have register. So the way we would organize this is um, you would collect your registrations and then when the registration period ends, but before tra or at least before the trading begins, we would send you an invoice based on the number of registrations we've seen um, at the best price license level that would apply to um, how many people you had to register. So if you have you know, five people register, you're only going to pay 50 bucks, but if you have 500, then you get the bulk discounts. Right. How far in, how far in advance did you say you you would need that? We don't need an advance. We would do it based on the actual registrations we see come in. We would send an invoice before trading begins, um, and then if you still keep registration open, we might have to send you an updated invoice later, um, depending on any additional registrations that came in. Okay, and, thank you. And the top uh, site license, I believe you said, was four thousand dollars, right? Yep, that's four thousand dollars for uh, one thousand users. So that one would cover quite a lot, and it comes down to just four dollars per user. Um, right. And then if you have more users on top of that, it would be the same four dollars. Correct. I have a question about the admin. First of all, can there be more than one admin? The way it's set up, or the use the same password or whatever. Yeah, the, they would have to share a login. Um, okay. There's we have, we have one administrator is the top of each challenge. And do you have written directions for the admins or the participants or just the videos? Um, in the admin resources we have here for the admins, there's quite a lot of documentation. Where for all the the uh, admin stuff, we have both written guides and video guides together. For the users, we we do have a user guide. It's not as good as the videos. Um, and they're usually embedded into some of the other lessons we have. But with that said, this summer we are working on a complete user guide that, we'd be, that we're going to send out with our transactional emails when a user registers, um, which is going to be text and images, not just videos. But that's something I don't have to show you this second, but it's something we're working on. And then the, you mentioned the videos, like if we turned on a couple of videos to make them available, um, is there any, like, they don't have to watch them, right? So if they know what they're doing, they can... Correct. So okay. That, okay. you could set it up as an assignment, and if you set it up as an assignment, it appears um, on the right side of the page when people log in to really prompt them to do it, which is what I have here. Um, but if you don't, they're still up here in the tutorial videos. And not completing your assignment has no impact on the game itself. It's just how you want to you know, emphasize it or not. Hey, Kevin, quick uh, question regarding trading. Sure. Is there, um, is there any settlement, depending on what kind of instrument you're trading, either stock, ETF, or mutual funds, say someone's used up all their cash to buy X number of positions and they sell, um, is that money tied up to buy a new position? You know, or is it instantaneous? It's instantaneous. So even with mutual funds, same thing? Uh, mutual funds always settle at 6 p.m. at the end of each day. You can't day trade them. Um, okay, so they would. So the user would need to know that you need to sell a mutual fund the next day. You could trade stocks. Yeah. So if if you have mutual funds in your portfolio, you want to liquidate them. You would put your sell order in before four p.m. and mm -hmm. about okay. six p.m. six thirty, it would sell, and then you have the cash available. You can place orders right away as soon as the cash is available, but they're not going to execute until the market opens the next day. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this one I do actually have some historical portfolio values. So this is what the portfolio chart would look like with user over time. They can compare their performance against several benchmarks we have set up. So the S&P 500, gold, oil, etc. My portfolio value is flat, slightly negative, <laughs> so I have not much to show. All right, well, um, you know, I already saw it and I thought, you know, I was impressed by what you got 
here, uh, Kevin. Uh, I don't know, Trevor or Linda, do you have any additional questions? If not, we can, you know, reconvene like we were supposed to after this and just discuss it, and then uh, I can get back to you, Kevin. I just have one question. So for um, the advertisement of our, our sponsors, uh, is there a limit to how many you can put on there, or is it just one, um, like you have on there, the infin uh, infinite financial? Can you, you know, or, and can you place them where you want to place them along with the video um, possibility or no? So when it comes to sponsorships like that, th this announcements box is flexible, but it doesn't move. It's at the top of this page. Um, the simple way that 95% of people do it is they actually upload an image here and it, you know, it kind of crops it in a way I don't particularly like, and then you can put other stuff below that if you want to. You can see here, I actually just use HTML where I put the image somewhere else and I posted it. And in that case, you can put as many images as you want because it, it'll take any HTML and it'll just make the box longer as you add them. Now, with that said, if you had a lot of sponsors and you were moving forward and there's a lot of people who wanted to be featured, you could do a, a white labeled version of Personal Finance Lab, which instead of it's having PFIN Lab up here, it would have your logo, it would have your colors, um, it would have your sponsorships anywhere you wanted throughout the entire page, but that's a $15,000 price tag. <laughs> so it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a different Let me get ballpark. Right on that. Yeah, that will be, if, if this is a super success, uh, then we can talk about maybe upgrading. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm not, so I'm graphically challenged, Kevin, so just a fast question. If we wanted uh, several logos there, could we create, uh, put several logos like on a PowerPoint or something will let you upload like a PDF or something like that? Or is it only... So let me give you an example here, or I'm just going to take that same logo and post it a few times. Now, I, when I log in, it just stacks them. Um, you can space it out however you want it. If you put it together in a PowerPoint or something, you have an image you want me to put up here, I can do that, but it's all gonna be in this box. Linda, if you need help, I can help you with that. I guarantee we'll need help with that. <laughs> now, if you are using the budget game, there are a bunch of other easy places to do sponsorships. Um, events in the game, things like that can be sponsored easily. Um, we can just add in extra events that the participants would see but since we're not really looking at that in this context i don't know if you want me to go through that at all not not today um but it might be something for them to look at later on so so it doesn't look so okay. fancy yeah, this is very impressive <laughs> Okay, well, if there's no other questions, I think we can call the meeting. If you do have any other questions later, you can email me, um, Kevin at personalfinancelab.com or ksmith at stocktrack.com. Both go to me. Um, if there's anyone else on your team who would like more information, um, I can make this the recording I made of this demo available, or I can, we'd be happy to do another one, another call uh, to go through anything you'd want to go through. Okay, perfect, Kevin. Appreciate your time. Yep. Have a great day.